Your basic open guitar chords contain a creative landscape that you may have never discovered until today. On today's show, you and I are gonna explore the magical land of chord modifications and how they can very quickly and very easily elevate your rhythm and solo guitar playing. Hey, TAC family, welcome to episode 238 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. This show is designed to inject your guitar journey with a weekly dose of fun, focus, progress, and inspiration. Speaking of inspiration, a little bit later on in today's show, you're gonna be hearing from TAC family member Darren, who's gonna show you the most striking contrast between how his guitar journey looked before a routine and now how it looks with a very consistent routine. It's pretty amazing and I cannot wait for you to meet Darren. And then of course, you're gonna see what the TAC family is working on today. It's a guitar lick entitled Cement Mixer. And we're actually gonna kick this show off with that very lick. Because right after that lick, I'm gonna show you how chord modifications manifest themselves in that lick and how they can manifest themselves in your playing. Plus your weekly dose of acoustic news awaits, which includes a Chicago musical scandal two absolutely breathtaking guitars, and so much more. But first, let's go ahead and see what the TAC family is working on today. Every single day within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, we focus on one of the five essential categories of guitar improvement. Mondays is a technique challenge, Tuesdays a guitar lick challenge, Wednesdays an improvisation challenge, Thursdays a rhythm guitar challenge, and Fridays a chord transition challenge. It is Acoustic Tuesday, and that means the TAC family is working on a guitar lick. And here Here's exactly what they're working on. Today, your guitar lick challenge is in the key of C, and it unveils a way of playing, a way of thinking about the guitar that I think you'll find extremely useful. This lick is entitled Cement Mixer. It's in the key of C, and it's named Cement Mixer because that's kind of the feeling you get. It's kind of circular, it can feel a little confusing, but as I mentioned, it unveils a certain type of playing, a certain approach that you can use throughout your playing, regardless of whether you're, you're finger picking or not. It's a really great way. And as I play through this, I want you to pay special attention to my fretting hand and how little it moves contrasted with how many notes are actually being played. Okay, here's how it sounds. A really beautiful lick that has this, uh, as I mentioned, kind of a circular feel. And it reveals this wonderful power of playing within chord shapes. So uh, we'll get there in a moment, but first, TAC fam, to learn this, please log in. This is your daily challenge for today. Go ahead and click on Start Challenge. That'll take you to the teaching video where you can learn it and then move to the play along video. Pick a speed that's comfortable for you and don't forget to click on the tab icon in the lower right hand corner so you can pull up the tab right next to that video. Okay, so this lick, what's it good for? What's the deal? Well, let me give you a very specific use for it, and then we'll kind of zoom out. This particular lick functions well over the following chord progression, C, F, G, C. Okay, and you'll see that with the chord shapes that I'm making. So let me go ahead and go through it one little chunk at a time. Uh, this first part, that's clearly over C chord because I'm making a C chord, right? Pretty cool. This next part is over an F chord, and you'll see the F chord show up in my fretting end here in a moment. So that second part of the lick, I'm oh, sorry, right? That's an F chord. So we have C to F. So, so far, and then back to C. I'm not doing the pull off quite yet, but this is back to a C. So I guess it's C, F, C, G, C. But you get the idea. What I'm trying to show you here is that what I'm doing with my fretting hand is not a lot. However, because I'm playing out of a chord position, manipulating my fretting fingers within a chord position, I can actually access a lot. In fact, C, the C chord shape is one of those shapes where you can actually access the entire scale just by holding down a chord, which is incredibly useful when you finger pick. In fact, that's, you know, if we look at a song like um, uh, Freight Train. I'm oh, sorry. Right, I am not even moving my finger out of the chord shape, and that's really the same philosophy here. Um, when we go to the open strings, 
in this lick, that's over a C chord, and then we come back to, and then that's that C chord again. Let me play through it in its entirety, and I'll try and name the chords uh, after I play the chunk. Here goes nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try and make this as smooth as possible. Here we go. <laughs> C. F. F again. G. C. Um, not as smooth as I would like, but um, it's really hard to talk and play that at the same time. One of the things that I should probably work on. Uh, anyways, I hope you get the idea. And what's wonderful about this is that it does have a very specific use, but I think the underlying importance is not necessarily playing this exactly over a C, F, C, G, C chord progression. It's more so seeing how powerful playing out of a chord position is. So I hope you really dig that. And before we get back to the show, I wanna to talk to you about Patience, not the Guns N' Roses song, Patience. I think they sang that, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was them, the whistle thing anyways. Uh, <laughs> anyways, sorry. Um, when it comes to your guitar routine, I want you to go easy on yourself, okay? I'm not saying let yourself off the hook. In fact, I wanna take that whole phrase out of our vocabulary because it feels like, it feels like we should be, it's this undue pressure. It feels like we should be doing something, and if we don't, we're doing something bad. I want you to be kind to yourself and have patience. When it comes to starting a guitar routine, when it comes to maintaining a guitar routine, I want you to be patient. It's not a light switch that you just flip on and one day you just said, okay, well, I'm gonna, pay, I'm gonna play five days a week and that's that, done. And I start it and I never waver. It, it, that's great on paper, but you know, life is busy, life happens, and we have to adjust, we have to flex. Sometimes our guitar routine on paper doesn't play out the way we want it to in real life. But instead of feeling like you're not doing well or feeling like you failed or feeling like, gosh, I, I just, I, I can't do a guitar routine, you can. You just have to have patience with yourself. And if you feel like you're on the string of three, four days without playing, don't fall into the trap of saying, just because you haven't played for three days, you never play. When that happens, I want you to zoom out just a little bit, extend your time horizon, and maybe look at the last month. Chances are you've played a lot more than you think you have. We have this tendency to assign uh, good or bad based on our most recent experience. So if you're feeling down in the dumps about your guitar routine, zoom out and remind yourself, hey, actually you did play more than you thought. And again, please have patience as you're developing your guitar routine. It's not a light switch and we call it a guitar journey for a reason. It's a pretty stellar lick and one that is very fun to play. And the whole driving force behind that lick is indeed chord modifications. So what better time to dive into the lesson behind the lick? Think of it as a VH1 behind the music, but instead of learning about a musician's sordid past, you're gonna learn about the mechanism that drives this lick, why it works, what it allows you to do, and I'm gonna show you some examples as well. So let's go ahead and get started. The concept for today is chord modification. Now, what does chord modification allow you to do? Actually, let me just go ahead and back up. Let's define chord modification. Chord modification is taking a basic chord, which contains three notes, and adding or subtracting notes to it. Maybe it sounds a little intimidating. I can assure you it's not. I'm gonna show you how to do it right here, right now. And I can guarantee you in the next five minutes, you'll be doing this and it's highly addictive. It's actually really fun. So what does adding chord modifications to your playing allow you to do? Well, number one, it allows you to add melody notes to your chords which is great for rhythm guitar because it allows you to reflect what somebody is singing and it beefs up your chords, which brings me to the second thing that it allows you to do. It allows you to milk every ounce of usefulness out of basic open chords. You know, open chords or cowboy chords sometimes get a bad rap because they're simple, because they're not elaborate enough. With chord modifications, you'll very quickly see that basic open chords are capable of some pretty heavy lifting. I cannot wait to show you what lies ahead. And the final thing that chord modifications allow you to do is, it, is they allow you to open up a vast array of options when it comes to finger style guitar. And I've got a great example that I'm gonna show you. Now, why do chord modifications work? Well, chord modifications work because what you're doing is holding down a chord and adding scale tones to that chord. 
See, a chord contains a basic major or minor chord contains three notes. And with chord modifications, you're adding a fifth, uh, fourth note, sometimes a fifth note. I gotta learn how to count. But with chord modifications, you're adding a scale tone to that chord, essentially expanding the layers of harmony that you're offering. Again, it sounds kind of theory-ish, it sounds geeky-ish, but you don't even have to know what you're doing. And I'll show you very quickly how to experiment with this. So without further ado, let's dive into some examples of chord modifications so you can start adding this to your playing right away. This initial example that I have for you emphasizes two things. The first thing it emphasizes is that you can add melody notes to a chord. And the second thing that it emphasizes is that it opens up fingerstyle options. These two things go hand in hand. And I'm gonna use the classic song Freight Train as an example because it's literally one of the best examples to show how powerful chord modifications are. So let's just look at the first part of Freight Train. I'm gonna play it for you fingerstyle first and then I'm gonna break it down as to what's actually happening. Here's how Freight Train sounds. to go through everything, but I think very quickly you're gonna see that, okay, there's a C chord and a G chord and I'm adding and subtracting notes. Those are the melody notes, right? So we have Freight Train, a basic C chord. Da, 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 da. So I'm just strumming those chords and singing the melody. The beautiful part about chord modifications is you're actually adding those melody notes. All I'm doing is taking the free finger I have uh, when I'm holding down those chords, in this case it's the pinky, and I'm adding those melody notes. Simple chord modifications here. Yes, each of these chords is a different quote unquote chord, a different voicing. Sometimes I'm adding notes, sometimes I'm subtracting a note, but you don't have to know what each of those chords are named to use chord modifications. You can quite simply experiment. That's for a later example I'm gonna show you. I'm actually gonna show you some open chords and some things that you can try right here, right now. So that's adding melody notes. And you can see how that really uh, segues directly into finger style. Any song that you wanna play, if you understand the chord structure of the song and you wanna add those melody notes, hold down the chord, search for those melody notes, and then put a finger style pattern over it. Yes, I'm oversimplifying it a little bit, but really that's the order in which you can create finger style arrangements. More on that in a future episode. In fact, if you wanna see that, uh, let me know in the comments below. Okay, the second example I have for you where chord modifications really flex their muscles is quick chord changes. Let's look at the chord change from G to C. Let's say you're playing a song and the chord changes are coming fast and furious. Maybe every beat, maybe every other beat. And making a new chord is kind of hard on your fretting hand, a ton of movement. With chord modifications, I can hold down a G chord and just use my index and middle finger to very quickly accentuate the C chord. So I can change from a G to a C rather quickly. A song that uses that, it's a great example, is a Girl from the North Country. A uh, very quick G to C kind of bounce and chord modifications are a great way to achieve that. You can also do it from a C to an F, holding down that C chord and moving your pinky and middle finger to an F chord shape like so. So you can see that chord modifications really help those quick chord changes. Something that you may not have thought of, you know? Sometimes if you're learning a song and you see all these chords, you think, okay, new shape, new shape, new shape, new shape. 
It's a lot of shape, it's a lot of fretting hand movement. If you start to look at it through the chord modification lens, you can start to see, okay, well, I don't have to play the full chord. I can just very quickly accentuate it or imply it and then come back to that main chord. It's a pretty great trick. Now, I should say this, chord modification is a blanket term and one that I'm using that I don't know if it's necessarily universally accepted. It's something that uh, I just wanted to name what I was doing. So I call it chord modification. Uh, other folks will call it maybe maybe extended harmony, chord harmony, et cetera. But I wanted it to be a little bit more approachable and seem like, well, you didn't have to know what you were doing to the chord. You just were seeking out a really cool sound. And that brings me to the third example. And that's really unlocking the power of those open chords, those basic open chords to really dig in deep to your rhythm guitar playing and give it some spice, give it a little bit of flowery blossom, if you will. So let me go over some basic chord shapes and show you what are some options, okay? I'm not gonna go into, into major detail here. I'm just gonna very briefly go through these chord shapes. Uh, you saw the C already, and what I, wanna, what I want to encourage you to do here is use your pinky finger and index finger to bounce on the high E and the B string, something like this. C7. But again, just a great thing to experiment with. You can even take the fingers that are fretted, lift them up, and place them back down. Something like this. Right, so a lot of experimentation can happen here. And no, you don't have to know what you're doing. Look at the chord shape, look at what fingers are down, look at what fingers are available, and quite simply, start moving them. Very quickly, you're gonna find out, okay, I'll avoid that note. It doesn't sound good. It's not a mistake, it's just experimentation. Let's look at a G chord. I wanna encourage you to use your pinky and index finger again with the G chord. Some great options there. And again, with the fretted notes, you can move those around. Right, depending on whatever strumming pattern you wanna use. Uh, you can make a three-fingered A chord. We saw episode, I think it was 237, we talked about the birds. Chord modifications was a main lesson from the birds. And this is the song. Um Yeah, it's uh, feel a whole lot better when you're gone. I believe that's the song. Uh, but you can do that over a three fingered A chord. You've got a D chord. the same rhythm there. I'm bouncing between my middle and my pinky finger. Really, the list goes on and on. If you want to get bluesy with it, you can do an E minor chord, play around with your pinky a little bit. A lot of stuff you can do here. And really, the main approach I want you to use is, number one, don't think about it. I'm not saying don't know what you're doing. Later on, you can dig into the details of harmony. But for right now, just have some fun with it. Hold down that chord and move some fingers. If you like what you hear, do it again. <laughs> okay, so that's a little bit of the lesson behind the lick. Uh, a great thing you can add to your playing that really extends your rhythm guitar offerings and really can make a basic chord progression come alive. Now, I do have a question for you before we move on to the rest of the show. And that is this, have you used this technique before? And if so, what song did you use it on? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if this technique is new to you, you can also let me know in the comments as well. I'd love to hear from you. Now I want you to meet TAC family member Darren. During the last Tony's Acoustic Challenge live 90 day progress party, I had the chance to speak with Darren about his guitar routine and how truly transformative it has been. And just to establish a baseline, here's how Darren's guitar journey looked like before implementing a consistent guitar routine. And here's how his guitar journey looks like now after implementing a consistent guitar routine. I mean, the great thing is that I can't walk past the guitar without picking it up now. Whereas it used to be put down for two or three years at a time. I wouldn't pick it up. You know, I wouldn't go anywhere near it. I mean, as you can see, I'm, I am a keyboardist, so don't hold that against me. But it was, <laughs> it was just one of those things where I, I just never got into the routine. And I was the classic dabbler that you, you know, you show in all of your videos. And I think that's why this has helped me so much because it's given me that focus every day to come in, pick up the guitar and just play it. Um, so the daily challenges, I don't get them all by any means, um, but I give them a, a crack. And then um, 
you know, I've been writing a few songs and trying to get in on the uh, virtual open mic. So, so yeah, the, the routine is is just brilliant because I, I don't want to walk past the guitar without playing it. And just to dig in a little bit more, I want to show you what Darren's working towards now. I want to show you the goal that he's working towards. And one of the cool things about a consistent guitar routine is that once you implement it, once you find yourself in the groove of a guitar routine, it opens up so many possibilities to work towards the goals you've always wanted to work towards, but maybe never really knew how to get to. Here's what Darren's working towards over the next 90 days. It's partly I'm going to be writing some more songs because we're going to have a get together in the UK with a few TAC members. So awesome. I want to do a little bit of stuff with that. So that'll be my first time playing live with real people because we've done <laughs> virtual stuff up until now. Um, but slide, I want to try some slide out because nice. I really like the sound of it and I've never tried it before. And, and the last, um, you know, the, the uh, Acoustic Tuesday sort of inspired me to look at slide again. One of the great things about the Tony's Acoustic Challenge live 90 day progress parties is that it gives a chance for TAC family members to connect with other TAC family members via breakout rooms in Zoom. And during the last 90 day progress party, Darren's breakout room had two brand new TAC members in it. And he actually gave them some wonderful advice about how powerful a guitar routine is. And it may not be what you suspect. Here's what Darren had to say to them. And we had a lovely conversation in our breakout room. Two people that are just new to TAC, one nice. for a couple of weeks, one for four or five weeks. And I, I was just saying, you, you won't notice it. You won't notice what's happening to you, but you'll go back in sort of six months, nine months time, and you'll be able to play stuff that seemed seemingly impossible when you started. So, you know, it just seeps into you really through this. Huge thanks to Darren for giving us some insight into his guitar journey and some insight into how powerful a consistent guitar routine is. It's certainly not a light switch, as you heard Darren say. It's something that over time, the impact accumulates. And you look back and think, holy smokes, all these tiny little playing sessions that I've been getting in really add up. Again, thanks to Darren. Thanks for being a part of the TAC family. And again, thanks for sharing your guitar journey with us. It's now time for your weekly dose of acoustic news you can use. And we're gonna kick things off by honoring a great guitar maker, a great guitar maker that recently passed uh, some weeks ago, uh, Rick Turner. Uh, my sincere condolences, uh, our sincere condolences as a guitar geek community to uh, Rick's family and everybody that has been impacted by Rick's work in the guitar industry. And believe me, you're sitting there and you're probably thinking, I'm not really familiar with Rick Turner. Chances are, if you used anything guitar related, Rick Turner had a hand in developing it. From guitar models to accessories to tools, he was a true inventor, a true guitar genius, and the guitar community will certainly miss him. Uh, next up on my list is uh, something from Chicago, a Chicago uh, musical scandal of sorts. Uh, Chicago Music Exchange released this video on April Fools and I thought it was absolutely hilarious. I wanted to share it with you. And the question was, is, is Nathaniel Murphy legit? Is he truly from England? And there's been some security footage that shows maybe otherwise. Here's the video. I'm probably gonna get in a ton of trouble for making this video, but I felt that I just had to upload it. I've been at Chicago Music Exchange for a few months now in the marketing department, and I'm starting to think that Nathaniel Murphy is not actually from England. I know a lot of you have had your suspicions in the comments, and I'm with you. I have no idea why he would pretend to be English, but I've got a lot of evidence to prove it. I got my hands on security footage, video demo outtakes, and some hidden cameras, and he's usually pretty good at staying in character, but sometimes he slips out of it. Take a look at this. Dude, awesome. What did you say? Oh, it's lovely, this. Oh. I'm gonna flag some tea and biscuits in the afternoon, right, Laurel? Oh, you got it. Yeah. So yeah, make sure you come out and check this elegant and luxurious uh, 355. It's absolutely beautiful. Cut. Dude, man, this is awesome. 355, look at the curves on it. This is gnarly, dude.
I mean, come on. Next up is a folk musician you need to hear. Willie Carlisle. If you have not heard him, you're about to, and he is absolutely captivating. From the way he plays, to the way he sings, to what he writes. Holy smokes. And I want to draw a parallel between him and Benjamin Todd. I don't feel like they are the same artist by any means, but their writing is, is equally impactful. And wow, I went into a huge Willie Carlisle rabbit hole, and I'm so happy that I did because I discovered an artist that I truly, truly enjoy. And I want you to discover him as well. Here is Willie playing the song, The Grand Design. All I asked of you is your better years. All I know how to do is waste them. We'll philosophize on the grand design and mourn all of creation. And as I mentioned, I went into a huge rabbit hole of Willie Carlisle's music, and well, I want to share with you one more song. Here's his song, Cheap Cocaine. Now that I'm gone, I think of the man with a meth pop clutched in his bone thin hands. Said, hey brother, I hope you get straight. I know I won't meet him at the pearly gates. I sing, hey mama, I've been staring at the rain. Little heartbreak, little soul pain. Up all night on the cheap cocaine. Trying to make it better, but it's always the same. Next up is a guitar that you need to hear, a guitar that you need to see. And I'm not sure what we should do first. Should we look at it, and then should we hear it? Should we hear it, and then look at it? I think we should look at it first, because this is one of those masterful instruments that is equally uh, visually stunning as it is sonically stunning. Let's have a look at this Dion guitar. This is a number four model, and the top is Western Red Cedar, and the back is Lapacho. I've never heard of this tone wood before. Uh, visually, it looks like a ribbon mahogany of sorts, but I am not an expert on this, so please, uh, please, if that's not the case, don't hold that against me. I'm just saying visually, it looks a lot like mahogany. And I have to draw your attention to the inlay on the back of the headstock. It is something so simple, yet it brings such a, a, a beautiful elegance to this instrument. I can't even describe the way it makes me feel. You know when you see something and it just kind of gives you the goosebumps and it makes you think and it makes you just kind of stand back and have comfort that humans make beautiful things? Uh, that's what the back of this headstock does for me. And uh, the guitar in and of itself is gorgeous. And as I mentioned, visually it is striking and sonically it is beyond striking. Here is that very guitar. Before I let you go, I've got a couple quick news nuggets that I want to share, the first of which involves the band Watch House, formerly Mandolin Orange. Uh, Andrew and Emily were actually recently in a car accident. Uh, they were crossing the street on foot, and a car did not see them and hit them. They are okay to the best of my knowledge, but they are recovering. And I wanted to bring this to your attention in case you want to send them some well wishes via Instagram, maybe shoot them an email and say, hey, thinking about you, uh, you never want to see a fellow musician, really a fellow human being. Uh, get hurt in any way, shape, or form. So uh, I'm sure your well wishes would be very welcomed by them. So from all of us here at Acoustic Tuesday, I certainly hope that you two are doing better and recovering as fast and as healthily as you can. The next news nugget I have for you is a guitar that has been set on fire. Yes, the folks at Mule have gone bananas and they set one of their Mavis guitars on fire. They actually did this intentionally. There's an ancient, I believe, Japanese technique in which you burn the wood and then oil it in a way to preserve it. They did this on a mule, Mavis. It looks incredible. It has this wonderful dark, well, charred finish, and it just has this vibe. It's, it's just oozing vibe. Um, really, really interesting. Make sure to check out mule resophonic guitars for both steel-bodied and this amazing instrument, the Mavis. I can't say enough good things about it. Uh, the Mavis has blown my mind. It will surely blow yours as well, especially after it's been 
lit on fire, apparently. Uh, and then the final news nugget I have for you is, uh, you know, I've brought up Henrik Lundqvist numerous times on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Um, one of my favorite goalies uh, from the NHL who recently retired. He has a lot of free time now, and dude is a guitar geek. I showed you pictures of him playing. I showed you pictures of his retirement gifts, which were mostly in guitar form. And he recently had some time off where else, would, where else would a guitar geek go but the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Uh, so cool to see uh, Henrik getting out there and, and really living it up, living up his guitar geek life now that he has uh, more free time. Henrik, if you ever want to come on the Acoustic Tuesday show, uh, you're absolutely welcome. If you ever find yourself in Bozeman, Montana, you know, just hit me up. Just, just let me know. I know that's a long shot, but sure it would be cool to have you on the show talk about guitars. I know it's a long shot, but I had to put it out there. And on that note, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But first, let's take a sneak peek into next week. Next week, we'll be tuning up some technique. Yes, next week's episode is a technique tune-up on harmonics. How to use them, how to make them, and even some, even some interesting ways to integrate them into your playing. Be sure to catch Acoustic Acoustic Tuesday next week. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time right here on YouTube. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. And before I let you go, I want to remind you of one thing. Your guitar success, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Thanks again for joining me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek, and I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers, Guitar Geeks Unite.